Hello, welcome little creatures. Today we're doing a very powerful video. We have Isaac here. Please like, subscribe, comment, and buckle up your seats. This is some juicy content. Isaac, tell us what we're what we're going into today. Yes, very excited for this one, Colin. So we are going to do some sort of, have some predictive um, Nostradamus fun here, as we've done a few times. We're going to look at the e eclipse the um, April 8th eclipse. So by the time this video comes out, it should probably be very, very close within a few days um, of the total solar eclipse. And what we're going to do is sort of play around with with some with some charts to show you how this eclipse might manifest both for America and also for Donald Trump. So we're going to use those two examples um, and show how we can use predictive techniques um, to yeah to get a read on on events based on different birth charts or different natal charts. So the two techniques we're going to use are normal sort of transits, I guess. So mapping the current location of the planets on the zodiac based on a natal chart. So the two natal charts we'll be using will be Donald Trump and also the natal chart of the United States of America, which is 4th of July, 1776, obviously. Philadelphia and the most common time used is 5 10 p.m. Philadelphia time. So we're going to use those two natal charts and then we're going to do the current transits. We're also going to do what's called uh, progressions. So what's usually called secondary progressions. This is a very interesting, it's something I have only recently started to really dig into. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but it's a really fascinating technique and it's sort of it's um yeah it, it sort of uh sh shows we seem to be living in some f fairly well programmed sort of simulation sort of matrix thing that's going on so with with progressions essentially the it's based on the theory that the planets from your natal position they move on um in your chart one degree or sort of one um one one hour or one minute based on a single day in real time. So what I'm gonna do, that, that's, it's fairly complicated. So I'm gonna bring up uh, Donald Trump's pro uh, progression chart. And the way we're gonna understand how progressions work is to look at the sun. So essentially we can move Donald Trump's chart one day forward from when he was born and the sun will move one degree. That's sort of how, so the sun moves one degree approximately around the zodiac each day, because and then it moves 360 degrees-ish um, across a single year. Now, the way that secondary progressions work is that that day, so that natal chart, one day on, is equal to one year of your life. So the natal chart from one day after Donald Trump is born signifies his life one year after he was born. So to sort of move that forward, his natal chart 50 days after he was born would be his life 50 years after he was born. So you can see it's sort of this, this um, little coding we have going on where one day in real time is equal to one year in that person's life. So what we're gonna see in this chart is his son, has moved on one degree per day, and that equals one year of his life. So essentially, uh, 70 years, so um, 70 days, so the natal chart, 70 days on, will be his chart when he's age 70. And we can, we can start to see the power of this technique using Donald Trump's chart. So Trump has his son uh, in the 10th house, um, in Sidereal Taurus, but tropical Gemini, and it's about 70, 70 degrees away from his ascendant. So his, his ascendant is on the cusp of the 12th and the first house right there, and his son is sort of up here, 70 degrees away in the 10th house. So 70 years into his life, in his progressions, his son has gradually moved 70 de de degrees and crossed over the point of his ascendant when he was 70, 70-ish 70 years old. And so as you can see on, on, on the chart, this is his chart for when he was 
elected in November of 2016. Which again, he was born in 1946. So this is 70 years on from his date of birth. You can see that at the time that he was elected in November 2016, his son in his progress chart was exactly conjunct his ascendant. Now, what else is exactly conjunct Donald Trump's ascendant? The fixed star regulus, the ruler. So that's at the heart of sidereal Leo. You can see in this chart I've given uh, the true sidereal um, zodiac. So you can see that his son is right in the middle of Leo and right conjunct Regulus. So to sort of summarize that, his son has moved 70 degrees, one degree per day, which equals one degree per year of Donald Trump's life. And just as he rose to power, the most powerful position in the world, arguably, is when his progressed son moved over his ascendant and moved over the degree of Regulus, the ruling star. So you can see there how powerful, that's a very powerful way to see the effect of progressions. And there's probably no better example about this than Donald Trump's chart, because it's so, he's got that very tight conjunction between his ascendant and Regulus. And you can see his son moving on, hits his ascendant, hits Regulus, and suddenly he has this rise to basically ultimate power. So like a really, a really cool sync you can see there. So that's a really good example about how progressions work. And you'll see um, in, his, in his progressions chart, the moon has moved on even further. So the moon, because it moves more than one degree per day, um, it's gone a lot further in his chart. So with progressions, the moon is so often the main one that we look at because it's moved faster. And you'll see in his chart that the outer planets haven't moved at all progressions because they move very slowly. And the inner planets, so like Venus, Mars, they've moved approximately um, between the sun and the moon. So that they're either moving a bit faster or, or a bit slower than the sun. And so they're moving as well, but they've only moved, you know, roughly between 50 and 100 degrees. So that's a really, so that's our example of, of progressions. Hopefully you're still hang, hanging in there. If we look forward to, to Trump's progressions for the current eclipse, you can see that the sun's actually moved on past his ascendant now. So it's about uh, where roughly eight degrees. So it's sort of eight degrees past his ascendant because it's been eight years since he was elected to, to, uh, to power. So that's one, so you can sort of see, hopefully that, that explains um, progressions fairly well. So let's look at, at, at transits. So this is basically mapping the position of the planets now on the zodiac compared to where they were um, based on his time of birth. So a more simple, a more familiar way of doing predictions than, than the, uh, the progressions, because we can basically do a synastry chart. We can do on, on the inside, the natal chart, and then on the outside, the current positions of the transits. And that allows us to see where the planets fall in the houses of someone's chart. So we can see where this eclipse, what house it falls, and what aspects it makes to Donald Trump's natal position. And if we look at his transits for this eclipse, we can see the eclipse lies in his eighth house, which is not that great. Eighth house is where we experience a lot of the difficult parts of life. We might call it sort of the dark night of the soul, even. Um, it's sort of, it's, it's after the seventh house, which is relationships, where we have these strong connections with other people. And the eighth house is sort of where we move on, on to once we, once we experience almost loss in relationships. And we have this, this we suddenly are exposed to the, more difficult parts of life once we sort of have these really um, fulfilling person interpersonal connections then we move past that and we get to gate house which is where we sort of lose lose those things and so we experience experience um mortality uh deeper experiences with with sex and sexuality which comes after the relationship stage and then also things to do with being reliant on other people's money and other people's worldviews rather than our own so second house, which is the polarity, eighth house, second house. Second house is about our own wealth, our own assets, our own our own values, our own material wealth. Whereas eighth, eighth house is about more other people's dealing with other people's um, things rather than, than than our own, and it becomes very very sort of problematic and difficult things to happen in the eighth house. So this eclipse will be occurring in Donald Trump's eighth house.
So we might imagine that it, there's going to be difficulties arise um, for him during this eclipse. What's really interesting is that, so this is a, this eclipse will be essentially a Chiron themed eclipse because Chiron will be conjunct to within a degree, basically to within a couple of minutes of the sun as it's been eclipsed by the moon. So this is a Chiron themed eclipse, really. If we look at this eclipse, it occurs almost exactly opposite Trump's natal Chiron placement, which is in the second house. So he's Chiron in, in the second house. He has wounds to do with material wealth and assets and security. So, and we can, one of the defining things about Trump is this insecurity to do with wealth. And so he's constantly, constantly on the search for wealth creation because he does hold this sort of second house Chiron wound there that he needs to try and heal. Wow. And so yeah. he wants to make other people wealthy. He wants to make America w wealthy because he has this wound about wealth in himself. And so what's interesting is that this, this eclipse is occurring almost exactly opposite his natal Chiron. So it's a very strong Chiron polarity that he's going to experience for this eclipse. And another really sort of interesting and potentially difficult thing is that the south node of the moon, so that's the um, K2, um, sort of the tail of the dragon, it's the descending, the, the, the descending node of wh where the moon meets the ecliptic of the sun. And the nodes indicate when we have eclipses. So when the sun and the moon line up with, with the nodes, it means that they're on the same equal plane. So it doesn't, so the moon can go like that. And then it might go, we might have a new moon, but it passes over or under rather than, than across. When the nodes and the sun and the moon line up, you get the moon or the sun directly crossing each other like that. And then we get an e eclipse. So the south node K2 is very much to do with things we bring in what's behind us, the past, but very karmically heavy. There's a lot of, you know, we can feel it very strongly when we have K2 South Node transits. It brings up stuff from the past and it feels very karmically heavy, like it's dragging us down. And so right now, K2 is on pretty much the exact degree of Trump's natal Chiron. So he has this very karmically heavy energy right on his natal Chiron, right on his sort of deepest wound, and then the eclipse is exactly opposite that. So this is a very powerful arrangement for, for, uh, for Trump. So this is going to be a very, there's something I'd imagine very significant to do with the second house, eighth house axis and his, his relationship with the archetype of Chiron. That's going to be very strongly activated right now, but particularly across the eclipse. So yeah, a few really interesting things to consider then and hopefully, and so. Brilliant, Isaac, brilliant. Yeah, so if that's a great ex example, then you can see about how we can use both progressions and transits to try and look into how an event is going to affect someone. So now that we've done that, let's, let's look at the U uh, USA chart and we'll start to see some really interesting Ooh. things coming out about this. I mean, that was pretty good, let, let, let's be honest. So uh, if, if I was- Isaac, if shall, I was, we a, uh, shall we create a second, let's create a second video. Can, yep. That, that can work. Yeah, so we, we appreciate everyone who joined and, and participated in this. If you found this content enlightening, please leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Like, subscribe, become, consider becoming a member and receive one on one astrology tarot readings. If you become a member and support us to spiritualize and help build the Ascension 5D timeline through spiritualizing people. We appreciate you being part of this community and have a, an amazing day or evening wherever you are. Peace.